Rahim Ati Allah Ati Rasulullah Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself I know that Ajeez or Daif or Miskeen or Zalim or Jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah there was uh, more questions that we didn't get to and if you want to go over some more questions or, or we finished for the evening because it seems like there's a lot of people asking questions and then they get upset we didn't answer them. And also the help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah 25th of uh, Shawwal will be the shahadat of Imam Ja'far as-Sadiq as the sixth of the holy twelve Imams and the fifth of the Naqshbandi golden chain. InshaAllah give us a life to, to see the day and night of that reality and that Imam Ja'far as-Sadiq is salam to dress us and bless us from its reality which looks like should be coming in Friday, Saturday of next week, the Ursa Mubarak inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Thank you for your teaching and guidance. Uh, could you please tell us how we can understand what Allah wants us to do? Even if those ideas which we get from meditation may be from shaitan and nafs, then how shall we know what direction to move in our lives? Thank you in advance, Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. How to know what Allah wants from us? I think uh, we have uh, talks on the amanah. So that uh, you go to the New Muhammad website and that's, that's our so, sort of center database. You go to Nur Muhammad website on these questions and you go, go to the search and you type in the amanat and what is Allah wound from us. InshaAllah we try to find the articles that match that subject in the article will be the complete talk because when I talk I give a reference to Holy Qur'an, reference to the Holy Hadith. The article the editors will pull up Ayat al kareem they'll quote it, the Holy Hadith, they'll give reference to it and then the article will also have links to the videos on that subject. So those are important subjects and it's an immense, immense website of, uh, of immense realities and it's a, it's a a big resource that people should be using, should be going and searching and studying, printing out the article, reading it late at night, never in the daytime because people are busy working, answering, calling. That's not the time to understand the haqqaiq, it's best to take it out for people who think that they want to do seclusion. The best seclusion is night seclusion in which everyone is sleeping and you're going to now come against yourself. Because you could be nicely resting in bed but you stay up to take an article, read it, make notes on it so that this power of the qalam and the hand can begin to open onto the servant. That's how the immensity of these realities opened. For my shaykh uh, we took a life of writing, every word that was being spoken we were writing in the way that we write. We don't take shorthand and we don't write verbatim so we wrote to the ability that we had and then we started to put it to a website that we would put all the article in and then as a result of doing that then more information was coming out, uh, more in-depth explanations, more references, more, more ayat al kareem and all of these things were coming out because they were expanding that understanding and that reality. Because it's a sign of ihtiram and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad To take a haqqaiq of the one whom is most dear and most blessed, most loved by Allah we can't even say it enough on the tongue to show its immensity of who is the reality of Prophet That he's Allah's reflection. And Allah wanted to be known by this reality. So imagine then when you hear that reality and you don't show respect to it by writing it, it just came and it went. Then if you do show respect for it and then you database it, you put it out so that it would be there for generations to come 
And those simple acts may lead Allah to open realities that you know you're writing it and putting there. Why you don't write it and put it on a blog? You don't have to publish it, you put it out. And that's why the Urdu guys they're doing so great. Allah dress them, bless them and the, the proximity to Prophet is immense because of what they're doing. They took these realities and they started to type them in Urdu and they put out you know hundreds of articles now on Facebook. Those articles immediately now are transferred onto our website. So what happens now in Allah's presence to that servant that wrote these articles, wrote these realities of Prophet put them onto that website knowing that that website has thousands of people a day, thousands of people come to nurmuhammad.com a day. And who picks up these, who reads these and disseminated? And now their life is receiving those blessings. They know it, they don't know it, it doesn't matter. And what position and what preference they'll be given to Prophet on Yawm al Mashar, not something that can be understood. So everything that people are doing, there's a immensity of what's happening, immensity of the reality because maybe we don't know that reality how important it is. And anything that you do towards that reality how important that is because everybody's dunya based. If somebody comes say, you want a nice tech job, we're paying 250,000 a year, you say, bye shaykh, I've got to shave my beard, I'm out and I'll be gone. Because dunya has its importance for people and dunya calls, everybody's on the phone running. But akhirah, we have no understanding of that status, that reality and our effort and our time towards the reality. What Allah will open of immensities of, of blessings that just can't be understood. So alhamdulillah these people are doing, supporting, writing and Allah expanding their hearts, giving them and dressing them and that's our life. So from the company of the shaykhs that we learn from and that we would make their teaching and the teachings from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to reach the world, whomever Allah wants it to reach. It's not meant to, to reach everywhere in the millions because they're like shining stars on a dark night. Whom Allah want it to reach, it'll reach. Whom that reality is meant for them to reach, it'll reach. And it'll dress, it'll bless and change their lives. That when we sing the song that you are from the ni'mat of ishq and love and that with your hand you changed my whole destiny because their, their hand and the qalam is their tongue. So that's why we taught the reality is not what people understand on earth, means the alam bil qalam that you think the qalam is something that you use your hand with. But the heavenly qalam is a speech because there's no need for hands in that reality. So those whom inherit that reality, their tongue is a qalam, is a pen from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in which his heart is an ocean of infinite capacity. And all these shaykhs and awliya their tongue are like the trees. So when Allah described if the oceans were filled with ink and all the trees were pens, my words would never finish. That's a description of Sayyidina Muhammad part because the inner reality is Allah But who's speaking for Allah Who Allah is talking about in Ayatul Kareem? That if all the oceans were ink and all the trees were pens and qalams, my kalam would never finish. Why? Because these awliya they're the trees. The ocean is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And because their soul is swimming in that river, in that ocean, in the depth of that reality, 
their tongue just speaks all the realities from that ocean and puts out onto this earth immense lights like jewels from paradise, like diamonds, rubies, all these gems are just flowing upon the earth. Who wants those gems? So that's the, the state of child and rijal. Child, if I go to kids now I say, I got $200 or I got a $100 brand new bill, you want this or you want some chewing gum? They say, gum, what the heck I'm going to do with that? So then you can see that are we rijal or are we child? But Allah if He give you the diamonds of paradise that are even above paradise, it's only for us to even understand the uloom of these realities is above the level of paradise, it's in the depth of the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that jewels are flowing out from the depth of that reality and they're rolling onto the earth. Whom will take these jewels? and safeguard them. And that's what Allah is looking at. This is what Prophet is looking at. That you don't see that these are Jews yet you're letting them just to fall to the ground and go. They came, they passed and they left you. Though whom Allah they're been guided, they're, they're, they're murid and there's murad. Murad is one whom Allah pulled and brought up, that Allah guided them, put into their heart that understanding that collect those jewels and that your life is to collect those jewels and that whatever has been being taught to you write it, write it, write it because that book you have is more precious and more wealthy than all the wealth of a thousand earths. But you don't know its wealth until the day you take your breath or the day you die before dying. In which you understand the wealth in which was, was given to you and that you were made the custodian of that. What we said before, the one whom taught the knowledge what type of power Allah gave in the example of Sayyidina Sulaiman The ifrit who was going to steal the throne or the one whom had knowledge of the book and not the book of Qur'an, the book of Bani Israel. And he said, I bring it by the speed of your thought, I'll replicate it and bring it in front of you. This one action from knowledge. Imagine these jewels and imagine these realities that are flowing and we took a life of respect and we documented them. We documented these knowledges, we collected all these jewels, we collected all of these and that then began to be the life of the one whom carries the treasures of the heavens, the khans Allah. Huh what you say? The treasure of heavens? Khans? The treasure, Khans Allah, huh? Allah. Not the Khans from Genghis Khan. <laughs> Khans Allah. Huh? Khans Allah. Khans Allah? Yes. Khans Allah. Yeah. MashaAllah. It's the treasure of which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So then their knowledges that they took were the treasures that Allah bestowed upon them. Like the keys of Karun whose wealth was so much that he had camel loads of just the keys to the treasures and his wealth that was given to him. Allah can you compare that to the wealth of these realities that Allah is bestowing upon these servants? So then these teachings and these kalam that are coming out from this qalam of the Divinely Presence it bestows the wealth of all of paradises and above the level of paradise because they don't even want paradise. They want the wajik al kareem the eternal face of Allah in all its eternity as perish, all of paradise will perish. 
They say, we don't want that which is perishing from earth or from heavens Ya Rabbi, we just want the Divinely face. And this uloom and these knowledges are of that reality. What was the question? Alhamdulillah, this is a, a lifelong process in which to understand the depth of what's been given and what is being given and dispensing upon the earth and moving into the hearts of people that in days of difficulty there'll be 50 pockets of light upon the earth as a protection against Dajjal and the fitna of Dajjal moving upon this earth. So we pray that Allah dress us and bless us from those lights and from those realities and that the treasures of the heavens to secure us. What coming upon the earth and its najat can't be imagined, that no food, no health, no safety, nothing can protect other than heavenly qudra and heavenly light. I've said many times before that from the unseen realms when Allah will activate them upon the earth that the believers and above the level of belief because belief is people everybody thinks they have belief. But these are for the mu'min and mukhlas whom will survive onto the earth Allah will open from the realities of other creations in which they will come to teach how and what to recite to touch the earth that the food of your desire to appear and that food will be eaten by the believer to safeguard them when a time comes that there'll be no food for anyone to eat. So many, many miraculous abilities will begin to open upon the earth through these pockets of lights and these realities of lights. So be of those people and collect the jewels of paradise and make your life to be filled with the books of these jewels in which they are a custodian of the realities of paradise, the jewels and rubies and diamonds of all of eternity inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If our destiny has already been decreed on the night of promises then do we really have free will? If our destiny has been decreed on the night of promises, do we really have free will? Yeah, these are like philosophy questions. But the reality we've discussed before that don't worry about what's been written and what your destiny because you don't know it. So as far as you're concerned you don't know anything of what's written. When the shaykh teaks talks about what Allah going to write, that's of an understanding that whatever Allah is going to write is going to write but you achieve the greatest and the best. Ya Rabbi I want the best of what can be written, I want to have the, the actions and amas that are most pleasing to you so that I'm always under your satisfaction. Ilahi anta maqsood waridat matloob and our life is like on a plane. You got on board the plane and you get off the plane. You're coming into this world is not in your hand and you're leaving this world is not in your hand. So as this plane is taking off and in the air, your life is about being a good passenger, having good manners and good characteristics and through this good manners and good characteristics inshaAllah Allah always then unfold the best for that servant. So you're sitting in the back seat with good manners, good character, making nice salawats, doing all your practices. Somebody may come and say, oh there's a seat open in the front, we'll bring you up into the front. And then, oh there's extra food, we could you like some more nuts, here's some peanuts. So alhamdulillah everything by good manners and good actions Allah to take away whatever difficulty was coming and to give the servant from the endless bounties and endless treasures. And we just described again these jewels, so whatever your destiny was 
and whatever was going to be written for you of punishment and difficulties and the inheritance of what your father has given to you, the children inherit the destiny of the actions of their father. If you are going to inherit that destiny just accompanying that shaykh and listening to their teachings, the jewels that are thrown upon your soul and your reality immediately changes entirely your destiny. And that's why we were talking about that song that, you are from Ni'mat al Ishq and that your hands have rewritten my destiny. And that was the whole explanation for that reality. That from what they teach these jewels that come out immediately has been dressed upon your soul. That wasn't you, that wasn't anything to do with you. This wasn't something that was destined for you but by accompanying that one whom has those jewels merely dispensing it to you now completely changed your reality because now you are also now a custodian of those jewels. Rewritten now your protection, rewritten now your sustenance and rewritten now your darajat and who you'll be in the presence of. So by just opening their mouth they can change the destiny of people whom Allah allows to hear. That's why Allah is under that control whom we don't allow to hear will never hear those words. And whom we allow our name to be mentioned in their home, Allah is saying, my name I have to give a permission to be allowed to be mentioned in your home. Which home? Allah cares about only the walls of your house or your real home is in the heart. When Allah allows His name and His realities and the name of His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad He's allowing your heart to be in their presence, listen to what they're going to teach, listen to the realities that they're teaching, listen to the energies and frequencies that are coming from their zikrs and from their associations, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If I keep seeing a number repeatedly that has a connection to me, what could this mean? You keep seeing a number repeatedly that has a connection to you and what could that mean? Yeah, I don't know. You can email help me <laughs> at nurmuhammad.com because the, the reality again that will we'll go to the door of nothingness. So when you come to the door of nothingness, above that door I am nothing. If I negate myself then this knowledge is not about me. Numerology is not about who I'm going to marry, what my name is going to be, uh, what my job is going to be. This is all about ananiyam and me, me and myself. This gate of non-existence is that I'm entering now uh, I'm non-existent, the binary code, you have to be a dust, a nuqt so that you can learn about the one. But if you come to the door as one you don't even see the one. You see you know the people who their faith is, 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 is not their full, full on ones, they don't see one, they see it as nothing. So when you talk to these scientists and all these people they're so into themselves, what happens when they try to explain God? They say, no there's nothing there. So what do they see? They see the nothing and they see nothing because they're, the, they're at the wrong end of the formula. So only they'll come and teach us, no, no you better be nothing so that you can see Him. So the lower you bring yourself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. What do you say, Subhanak Allahumma Ya Rabbi I see you in everything, your majesty is in everything, how you made all these creations, how you made all these universes. So we're continuously having to bring ourselves down to see Him, to see His glory, to see His majesty, to see His kingdom. 
But these people have it, the opposite, the scientists and doctors and the, the knowledgeable people who went through the school system, they were taught so much to be the one, you're the one, you're it. <laughs> when you ask them to look where's God, they say, oh I see nothing. Yeah, because they actually see nothing. They're, they're at the other side of the binary, they're just looking and they see on the horizon absolutely nothing. So Allah bring for us a real reality to lower ourselves and to be nothing. It's the same with the knowledges of the uloom of, of the letters and, and numbers is that bring ourselves to be nothing so the reality of these letters and numbers open, not the reality of myself and what's my name and what's my number. But email us specifically for number or if you're seeing the number 11 and the reality of the Divine Mirror and different numbers that people see and how does that relate to the Muhammadan haqqaiq inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi is it true that the spiritual gondola will be soon stopped and there will be no travelling back to origins? If so, can we still catch up to your students who meditate daily even if we barely just started? My ego tells me I'm too late and the gondola stopping soon, no return to origin. Is that true? Is it true that the gondola that goes back and forth into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is stopping and that there's no chance of getting on? And what about the students who are doing it daily? No, because the students whom are practicing or not practicing has nothing to do with anyone else. They're not going into that because the shaykh is the gondola. So the shaykh is in a continuous movement into the heart and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and this happens faster than the blink of an eye. So we can only give references to people. As soon as the shaykh sits for his association, they merely are trained to negate themselves and they're in the presence of the reality. And that gondola took everybody who was logged in, tuned in, whoever meditated, contemplated and that's why we talked about build the relationship. The charity you give it builds the heart and purity, the love and in, in hadiyah, I will not say that name, hadiyah and hiba that you you give it builds a bond and that's why we said that there is no stronger bond to reach this reality except by muhabbat and love. So when we're teaching you to love Prophet because you can't go with your mind into the reality of the heart of Prophet you go with ishq and muhabbat and same with the shaykhs, how I'm going to keep the company of the shaykhs? I have to have a love for them, a respect for them, a connection with them. My heart then like a magnetic bond is locked. If you are locked from wherever you are, as soon as the shaykh enters into the presence of wherever he has to go and to whomever he's been directed to direct himself, everything is moving with him into that presence faster than the speed of thought, not even the, the speed of light, faster than the speed of thought. So immediately whomever locked onto them, they're locked onto the one whom they love through the whole shajarat and then they have also connection through their Ahlul Bayt and they locked on and moved. So their gondola is at the speed of thought. So they could never be never going back and forth, that's their whole on and off, on and off at all times. And their system will become much more powerful in days of darkness. That's when Allah took the game on for them, they're all waiting for their signal to be really turned on where they can flip the entire earth upside down if Allah gives them permission. So they're now pretty much not doing anything. But when Allah give them permission and Allah open what Allah will open inshaAllah that that system goes into real, real overload. So no this never shuts out, it's about to get a much, much stronger. 
Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Waalaikum Salaam <laughs> If we can't find Tariqa people to keep company with where we live, is it better to stay a loner and only have a virtual online sohba with our Tariqa? <clears throat> if I can't find Tariqa around where I live, is it better to keep uh, only online presence? So even if you can find tariqa where you live, keep the online presence because the tariqa not everybody is teaching this shaykh's teachings, not teaching this reality and as soon as you sit too much with people you can be deprogrammed and reprogrammed. Because you sit with somebody who's not being taught what you're being taught and you begin to talk about something and that person no, no I never heard this, I never heard this, I don't know, I don't know what that and they oh I know Mawlana Shaykh, I know this, I know that then you're gonna have problems. So best that you and what Allah opened for this earth is take your teachings. You take the teachings, you sit with the association, you have now the time is all yours on your own. Do your zikr, do your practices and then go out into the world and work. You don't need the fellowship, that's the real pandemic of humanity. Until the shaykh has a zawiyah in your area, until you know that that teaching is in that area and uh, best to keep to yourself, take your practices, go to work, come back again. And another three days of, of teaching, go back to your work, why you need more than that? So they're opening all of this teaching, all of these realities, it's not on every corner. And as soon as you sit with people, we have taweez, oh why you have tasbih, this is shirk, this, no. So that was teaching us in the pandemic, the real pandemic are people, the real virus are people. So. You don't need to have spiritual associations with a bunch of people that and this shaykh is not the same as every shaykh. It's not like every shaykh now teaches this reality, Wait, this is, this is, these are very rare realities. So best to keep your online presence, go to work, the time you have alone, do your meditation, your practices and spend time with your family, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Can you please speak about the spiritual reality behind lunar and solar eclipse? We had one a few days ago. Spread the… speak about the, the lunar and solar eclipse. I think we have a nice article on the, 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 su the sun and the moon and the moon effect upon people. So that's a whole talk that we go in for a long time. But to understand this reality of the moon, the earth and the sun. The sun represents an eternal light, the moon represents the guidance and the earth represents ourself and the inhabitants and, and sun people. And that our existence that Allah gave to, to us is that, oh people of the earth you're in need of the sun. So we are a creation in need of the reality, the sun is the eternal light. So we need eternal light in our life, we're not somebody who can exist without eternity. And that the moon and when you begin to study what's called the lunar emanation and the lunar effect on the earth, then quickly you'll understand that we are a creation actually affected and in need of the moon. The moon and its emanation controls what grows, affects the movement of the water and the tides and if it affects the oceans with the immense mass of oceans, you know high tide and low tide is based on the time of the moon. If it affects the ocean imagine what the moon does to the body and the movement of the blood, the energy within the body, within the blood, within the heart. All of those times then are, are what only Allah would take all of those understandings to understand the energy of people. And doctors know and police know full moon is the time of lunacy because it's reflecting a tremendous energy from the sun that it, it can come pure onto the earth. But that emanation of light is so strong 
that it makes the shayateen to go crazy. And that's why people who are, are all carrying satanic energies, willing or unwilling, bad and negative energies, the full moon makes them to go crazy. And those whom are of a spiritual nature and have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they have immense, immense love for that power that coming. That energy that make them to have a himma of spiritual ecstasy makes the devils to go crazy and angry. And that's why then the hospitals are filled with emergency room crimes, the police and jails are all filled from crimes because the energy is making the negativity to go bad. So definitely all these effects is a part of our spiritual understanding of Qamarun and the importance of the moon and that represents the awliya and guidance. The importance of the sun and the eternal light which represents the symbol of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah is shariq and nothing is like unto Allah So alhamdulillah there are, there are articles on Nuh Muhammad that go in depth onto that and the red moon is symbolic of Sayyidina Mahdi And that there are continuous isharats that are coming in a lot this year. That every time the red moon is appearing it's an emanation from the light and reflection of Sayyidina Mahdi upon this earth and that his tajalli is very close and the dajjal which is the counter of that reality his tajalli is very close and that these, these lights and isharats that they send from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi onto the earth and those whom are going to receive those emanations and to draw closer towards the Mahdiyoon realities that are now coming upon the earth inshaAllah. So it's a tremendous sign from the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi every time that moon goes red. That it's a Mahdiyoon tajalli of the position because the Fardani representative of the highest of the awliya positions that are in charge of this earth are representing that full moon. So like when awliyaullah are in an association, if Imam Mahdi moves into the center of that association means then everyone being dressed with a Mahdiyoon dress at that association. It then symbolizes onto the earth when that association is taking place and Imam Mahdi is dressing whom he's dressing, its reflection will show onto the earth because Allah I show you the signs upon the horizon but more important within yourself. But because people can't see what's happening within themselves, the sign on the horizon then is more visible and, and obvious for people. So these are associations happening with the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi salam inshaAllah and being dressed by it as a reflection Allah showing the, the moon is red and these are Mahdiyoon tajallis that are coming upon the earth. And that was heavy for the California area and Southern California areas and the, the, the lights that are coming into this region inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What do you do when you are too poor to get married? What do you do when you are too poor to get married? InshaAllah. InshaAllah Allah always give you more that again follow the tariqah, follow the salawats, follow the association that build the familiarity with the tariqah to do a khidmat and service. Everybody's rich in something, you know if you don't have the physical rizq Allah may have given you the gift of your hands, your ability, your understanding. Everybody Allah has given something to inshaAllah, use that of a khidmat and be of service so that one the, they can begin to pray that your rizq and that your hands become longer to reach to what has to be given to you inshaAllah and turuqs and tariqahs come to teach that the marriage shouldn't be based on money and the cultural communities that encourage that now is not an Islamic understanding, 
and it's not the Islamic way. This is all just now cultural sicknesses that infiltrate the religion and the religion should be simple that the man get married with a promise of the Qur'an and dates or a small coin should be sufficient as mahr and his obligation. But because now it's, it's corrupted its way it makes everyone to be in a difficult situation. InshaAllah in the area which you live there should be turuqs and there should be ways in which the turuqs keep and adhere to that understanding that they should be bringing men and women together and not asking for big obligations and that a Qur'an and a small coin should be sufficient and and should make it easy for, for men and women to be married. InshaAllah that there are uh, Naqshbandi associations in your area and we can inshaAllah help an email that if we can find Naqshbandi associations in that area and that if the shaykhs have taught that to the communities that they should not be requesting these big obligations and making big ceremonies and spending large amounts of money for the families that don't have that ability they should be able to marry their children in a reasonable and, and uh, respectful way so that people can get married inshaAllah. But Allah inshaAllah is great and inshaAllah open something for you to, to find the, what, what is uh, destined for, for you and what been written inshaAllah. As Salaamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Is there a concept of twin flames in Islam? Please forgive me is there, for ignorance. Is there a concept of twin, twin flames? Cut off again. Is there a concept of twin flames? Twinned flames. Twinned Twin flames. flames. Like soulmate? Yeah, I think we have, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we have a whole talk on the reality of zawj and ayat al-kareem that, that goes into these three realities. So best that we make reference to that article on, on Nur Muhammad and the reality of, of, of the zawj and our spouse and what Allah has written. But that again long talks that not, not can't be sort of described in, in two seconds or on a question. But inshaAllah everybody to whom Allah write for them inshaAllah that uh, in, in cutting out. Yeah, it's cutting up. So, <laughs> the microphone is. <laughs> In last days, things will change on this earth, and whom, whom they chose and whom family chose is one thing. As we get closer to the time of Imam Mahdi, salam, the reality that comes upon the earth has to match what been written upon Lahul Mahfuz, upon the preserved tablets. That that era of reality that when Sayyidina Mahdi zuhur opens upon the earth means that the reality of Lahul Mahfuz is now opening. The kingdom of Allah no more guessing begins to open upon the earth. At that time then whom is written by Allah is written and whom was not written by Allah is going to be something different. So means many things changing upon this earth as that reality is opening more and more. But everybody has a reality and uh, a reality of what Allah has written for them to be with. Right, Allah wrote everything, wrote everything that was destined. Not 99.9% uh, .9 I don't think 
followed what Allah was written not even by their own name that was given to them because the level of belief is no longer at that level. So if people don't have even the name that Allah wrote for them to have and they have the name of whatever their parents were inspired to give, then the relationships and everything else in their lives then were from their own desires and not what Allah has written for them. So there is a reality but it's very distant reality until the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi is coming because the kingdom of God, that system of understanding that the entire government of Allah is coming onto this earth. Then imagine that in every realm of our life what does that mean? Where you're going to make your sustenance is exactly where Allah wrote where you would be making it because you can't make it different. There's no questioning, there's no asking, there's only ihtiba and obedience, whatever he says is it, there's no discussion, there's no nothing. So when the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi comes means coming with the kingdom of Allah upon earth. So it's about complete ob- obedience and tarbiyah, that's why then the level of belief there has to be all muhsan, that their belief of what they survive through difficulties. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, amanu, O you who believe, you'll be tested so much that, that you believe, again belief and belief and belief so that their level of belief is so high that Allah allowed them to live in that time and that reality of Sayyidina Mahdi And that is no longer a time in which it's about just following and obedience and samina wa ta'ana. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Could it be heavy for the children to listen to this zikr? Could it be heavy for the children to listen to the zikr? InshaAllah the younger children should be enjoying it very much because they're clean and it's of an angelic light. So all our life we've exposed children to zikrs and they become ecstatic, they become energized, they go home they can't sleep because there's so much energy upon them. So it's of a heavenly nature so it's it's always a cleansing. As children become older and they're now exposed to schools and other children and other things then the zikr becomes cleansing. So it's extremely important that the zikr is like a shower. Every week you turn it on everybody has to be showered at least once a week. As soon as you turn the zikr in the house, we said before you open up the TV, open up the sound system, it's like the armies of Allah are entering into your home. And this, this energy enters into the home and begins to do the zikr, the energy inside that residence and begin to clean out everything. So of course it's going to clean the bodies, clean the the hearts, the minds and clean every corner of the house inshaAllah with the sound of dhikrullah and the salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad So then it can be cleansing when you see them reacting and agitating because these energies are coming into the home. So that again is extremely important. If they're now too old where they weren't exposed to that and all of a sudden at 17 and 18 you try to sit them down then they may not be patient towards that cleansing. And they may say, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it and because of an internal battle that's now happening and they are not able to sit through that. But inshaAllah they'll give everybody strength and you have to try to entice like Allah entices believers by promising you grapes, rivers and paradises and other things. So people then come, oh I want to go to paradise, I want to go to paradise. Then you do the same for your children, I give you some cash. When they're small give you chocolate, at the end of zikr I bought some donuts, some nice sweets, we're gonna sit for zikr at the end you can have some donuts and treats and ice cream and it's a, it's, it becomes a celebration and they always associate the love of Prophet as something sweet for them. So you never know at the age of 20, 30 years old they go off in their life they'll always remember that this love was a sweetness in their life and they go back to try to find it again. As they become older you give gifts and maybe some cash and whatever is necessary to get people to sit. 
Same way that Allah works with us, He's teaching us, then you do the same for the children, entice them, offer them, give them a gift so that you, you what is it called, discipline them or condition them towards the goodness and towards the love and then they associate this immense sort of immensity, generosity, love and sweetness in the remembrance of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. When making a decision between t- two or three choices, how do we know which one is the one written on the preserved tablet or are all three paths written? Please forgive me. When facing one's choices in life, they're one, two, three choices, how do we know which ones are, are the choices from preserved tablets in our life? Yeah, that again, remember this is all based on, we go step by step. One, build your connection with the shaykh, make sure your connection is strong, do the spiritual practice with the shaykh and then you meditate, meditate, meditate and then you can ask the question that you have, you meditate towards it and make your connection and inshaAllah it's more and more inspiration come to you of the choices that you're making and that becomes then your, your connection and the importance of your connection. When you begin to think that your choices are way off then more meditation, more salawat and you email help me at Nur Muhammad and you begin to understand that how to make your coordinates match the coordinates of the shaykh, inshaAllah. And you get better and better and better at it and inshaAllah you you begin to narrow it down that you're not way off, way off and that you become closer and closer to what Allah wanted. And the main thing about understanding of the day of promises is that all of the realities of what the shaykh taught. It's not only the small questions or the, the answers of what you promised on the day of promise, but what you promised Allah of following guidance and following these realities and entering into the depth of this reality to reach your covenant. What your ahad and your covenant was and the tariqahs with a strong relationship, strong practices, strong fires into your heart, that's your covenant. Not that, you know, should I choose the blue house, the green house, what was the house that I promised on the day of promises? No, no. Was, are you strong in the relationship with the shaykh? Are you doing your muraqaba? You're writing these knowledges, you're doing all these practices so much so that you became Muhammadiyoon and that was what you promised Allah Not he's not caring about anything from dunya. It was you promised on the day of promises you would buy a green house, why did you buy a blue house? It's not that, this is that those are all for you. Allah said, on the day of promises you promised you would have good characteristics, you would be Muhammadiyoon, that you would learn from these knowledges, you would be a custodian of these knowledges, you would support these knowledges, you would do all these things and are you doing them? And that's why then the shaykh is teaching you, these are the adabs, these are the manners, these are the practices. Allah don't care a thing for dunya. So your relationships, you're screaming, yelling at each other, Allah is not caring about the relationship, Allah's caring about your character. Say, I don't care who's right and wrong in your argument, I care that when I sent you to earth you said you would reach this level. And I said, you're going to reach this level and you said, bala, I'm, I'm going to reach it, I promise. And he came to earth and he said, for every discussion now you want to argue about this, argue about that but that's not what you promised Allah You promised you would be of a lofty nature, a high nature, a big reality. Did you achieve it? I want to do this, I want to do that. So the, the promise is much deeper, much deeper and has to do with our khuluq, our character, our reality and that are we of the Muhammadan nature, that are we a representative and have the immense love of the Muhammadan reality inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal hazati amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. وبسير سورة الفاتحة